Thank you, Jesus, that we can follow you all of our days. Lord, we just thank you right now for what's going to take place in this place, Father, in this building, in our hearts most of all, Father, because of your word, our hearts will be changed. Our vision will be changed so that we can see what eternal life is all about. It's because of your son, Jesus Christ, who died on that cross for us. So, Father, we just thank you for this opportunity. We're asking right now, thanking you that your Holy Spirit's going to move mightily in this building, in our hearts, in the souls that are out there too, Father. Lord, whoever's going to be watching this this evening, Father, and future viewers, that you are just going to move mightily in and through this service. And you are just going to shape, reshape us so that we look more like your son, Jesus Christ. And all God's people say, this evening, amen. amen. Um, last Sunday I gave the word and I was very blessed because Tina prayed over me in the circle prior to service starting and I was... Uh, very grateful for that because the Holy Spirit is mighty in and through her with all the God. And so, because of that, she's going to be giving us the word tonight also. The pastor just, like I say, always seeks the Holy Spirit. And she knows that Tina hears from the Holy Spirit and that Tina's going to give an awesome message. So I want to introduce Tina this evening. This is not, she is, does very well up here, I'll say that. And so, she had kind of you know, a funny smile at me. But anyway, that's why I invite Tina up here that she's, whatever God has placed upon her heart, we know is from you, Heavenly Father. We're just so grateful for that. So welcome, Tina, everybody. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you, thank you. Um, so I need to pray, too. Yes. Because that's what the Lord is leading me to do. So I'm just going to pray before we start. Um, Lord, thank you. Thank you for this evening. Thank you, God, that you have provided this day and that you have brought us here father and that you are going to bring the word out through me that you will use me i am your hands and your feet father god my words are your words and they will not be twisted in jesus name father god i thank you lord that lives are going to be changed god you said to come expecting lord and i thank you that i am here and i am expecting a movement of you that's going to shake and rattle bones in jesus name i thank you father that chains are going to break off and fall in jesus name i thank Thank you for healings, God. I thank you, God, that you see all and are all. And I thank you, God, that you are right here upon me in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Okay, so this week, um, God has really been testing me. We'll just put it that way. He's been testing me. And some of the things that I keep hearing is trust the process. And he uses so many people to tell me that. Coworkers, just trust the process. You'll be fine. You know, everything is a whirlwind in my life right now, and that's where God wants me. This is where he saw me to be, and it's okay. Uh, so he's telling me to trust the process. I'm going to tell you, trusting the process is not easy at all. If you've ever been in a place where you don't know one step in front of the other, but you just have to trust that it's going to be okay and it's going to work out, it's not easy to do that. It's not. And in the natural, you're shaken, but you're doing it anyways, because God said to, right? Mm -hmm. So this week when I was reading, um, he took me to a couple of different places. And the first place that he took me was my favorite verse, Jeremiah 29, 11. Okay? And he, in Jeremiah 29, 11, he says, for I know, I learned it, for I know the plans that I have for you. Um, but in the New King James, it says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Amen. And that struck me because I learned it a different way. I learned it out of the NIV. And when I read it out of this, I was amazed that God thinks of me. Because he says, For I know the thoughts I have of you. And I was like, Okay, God, I can work with this. So later on in the week, um, he talked to me about swallowing up my enemies. And I was like, what does that mean? What does that mean? And so he took me, okay, I'm just going to tell you. He gave me a vision. He gave me a vision of um, the Red Sea. And he showed me when the people were walking through the Red Sea, they walked through it on dry ground, right? And when they got to the other end, God was with them this whole time, but when they got to the other end, 
and the enemy had started to come in, what did God do? Swallowed him up. Well, I went and I read that because I was like, I don't really, I know the story, but I don't know the story. You understand what I'm saying? Like we always say, oh, you know the story, you know the story. Yeah, I do, but I don't know it in the way that God wants me to know it this time. Mm -hmm. And so um, I went in and I was looking and I was reading it and I just wanna go there because some of the things that he pulled out was phenomenal to me. Um, so Exodus 13, and he showed me verse 17, 17 and 18. Um, if you have the church Bible, it's on page 75. And it says, Then it came to pass, when Pharaoh had let the people go, that God did not lead them by the way of the land of the Philistines, although that was near. For God said, Least perhaps the people change their minds when they see war and return to Egypt. Now that struck me, because when you are getting free from something, you want the easiest way out, right? You look for the exits. There's an exit door there. I'm out, right? God didn't let them do that. Even though the land of the Philistines was near, he didn't let them go that way. He made them go a different way. Because he knew that once they saw war, they would change their minds and go back to the old. How many of us? have been free from chains and went back to the old because we were afraid of what was in front of us. Sure. We couldn't do it. We didn't feel adequate enough to do that. I've been there this week. I've been in those shoes this week. Okay? New opportunity in front of me. I don't feel worthy. Not at all. But God says, no, I brought you here. Just like this. And then in 18, he said, so God led the people around by the way of the wilderness of the Red Sea. So not only did he not let them go the easy way, he took them through the wilderness. What happens in the wilderness? Hmm. Trials, yeah. tribulation, persecution, yeah. And the children of Israel went up in orderly ranks out of the land of Egypt. And I was like, okay, God. I can see where you're going with this, but I don't quite got it yet. So then I read down a little bit further and verse 22, and it says, he did not take away the pillar of cloud by day or the pillar of fire by night before or from before the people. God was before them in the day with a cloud and he was before them in the night with a pillar of fire. That's what it says. So he never left them, even though he took them the long way, even though he took them through the wilderness, he didn't leave them hanging, he always directed them. And then we get to 14, and it says, <coughs> verse, chapter 14, 14 says, the Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. Amen. That is a huge promise. The Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace, right? That is huge. He's gonna fight for me. He's gonna keep this thing okay. Even though persecution is coming against you, even though the thoughts of the enemy are racking your brain, he's gonna change that and he's gonna keep you in peace if you follow him, if you keep your eyes on him, right? Amen. If you trust the process, trust the process that God is taking you through. He knows what he's got because he knows the plans that he has for you. He already made it, right? Yeah. He already called you there. Yes. So then we read down to 21 and this is where I was looking for earlier because I wanted to reread it. And it says, Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night, and made the sea into dry land. And the waters were divided. So the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea on dry ground. Could you imagine? Could you imagine being a child of Israel and you're here and you've already been through trials and tribulations because now you know Pharaoh's chasing you, the enemy's after you again after you were just released, and you're like, man, why can't I just go back? If I'd have stayed, it would have been better. If I'd have, if I'd have, if I'd have, right? No, God broke those chains off of you and now you're moving forward and of course you're going to hit some things because you wouldn't have made it anywhere if you didn't, right? You have to overcome trials. Like, you teach your children not to talk to strangers, right? You teach them not to talk to strangers. I 
teach my children not to talk to strangers. When you're outside, you don't talk to strangers. What are you thinking, right? Guess what my children did the other day? I come outside on the porch, and my kids are talking to a car parked on the corner with hands out of the vehicle. I freaked out, OK? They have to learn that, though, right? We can, I can talk to you, David, all day long. But you actually have to experience to, to get it, right? My kids experienced it that day, and they saw the wrath of mom, and they didn't like it. <laughs> but they learned from it, right? Even though that was a safe person at that time, I didn't know who that was. I mean, my street, the only people that park on my street are me and my husband, my kids. You know, that's just the way that it is. You know everybody, and when there's a strange vehicle, everything goes up. So that's what these people wanted. They wanted the freedom, but yet they were scared of what it would bring, right? And so it said, the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea on dry ground, and the waters were a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went after them into the midst of the sea, all Pharaoh's horses, all his chariots and his horsemen. Now it came to pass, that means it happened, right? In the morning watch, that the Lord looked down upon the army of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and cloud. And he troubled the army of the Egyptians. So here's God still in the cloud, still in the fire, still with them, right? And he's still seeing everything. He sees how close they are behind him. He sees all of it. So he's like, hey, lose a wheel. You know, the chariot just goes and loses a wheel. Trouble comes upon them because the Lord let it happen, right? But I find it interesting that the trouble is coming upon them now. At that moment, why not before they got there? I don't know. But it says, and he took off their chariot wheels so that they drove them with difficulty. And the Egyptians said, let us free from the face of Israel, for the Lord fights for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea, that the waters may come back upon the Egyptians, on their chariots and on their horsemen. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. And when the morning appeared, the sea returned to its full depth. With the Egyptians, while the Egyptians were fleeing into it, so the Lord overthrew the Egyptians into the midst of the sea. So God waited <coughs> until the right time to take care of that enemy. He waited until the right time to swallow them up, right? To release the children of Israel from the clutches of them, right? Mm -hmm. So we have to trust the process that when we're going through something, God's got the right timing. Because if they would have went back when they were scared, and been back in that place, God would not have been able to fully bless them, right? They wouldn't have gotten the full blessing from God. They wouldn't have received it all. And here, God, he like wiped them out, took care of them. They're done, no more, you know? No more, not even a thought, right? How amazing is that? I was like, okay, God, I get this. I'm getting this. I'm trusting the process. I, I understand now. And then he reminded me of Daniel. And he reminded me of, you know, doing the right thing and still getting in trouble for it. And I was like, okay, yep, I see that. You can do the right thing. You know, you're honoring God. You're trusting him with all of your heart and not leaning to your own understandings, right? And so God is like moving. And Daniel, he got in trouble and he had to go in the lion's den, not for anything he did because he didn't do anything wrong but because the enemy was trying to take him down. Well, the word of God says no weapon formed against you will prosper, That's right? right? Amen. So if you trust in him and you trust the process, no weapon's gonna prosper. These guys that were trying to take him down were close to the king, right? They were close to him. They had uh, voices in his ears. They could get to him, right? So then what does God do? God has this whole scheme planned out. The Lord knows, right? Daniel's going to go in there, and the angel's going to protect Daniel because Daniel didn't do anything wrong. And the king was in a place like, oh, man, you know, I can't believe that I allowed this to happen. He felt bad, so much so that he went home and he feast, uh, fasted, right, and prayed. 
And um, when he went back the next day, he's like, Daniel, has your God saved you? The God you, can, you worship continually, has he saved you? And Daniel spoke. And right then and there, God showed his power, right? God showed his power. And so what happened after that is what got me because I know God can save me, right? But what, af what happened after is that God not only saved Daniel, but he took those people, those, those I don't even know what they're called, those higher ups that were whispering in the king's ears. And the king, yeah, what is it? Say traps. Say traps? Okay. And he threw them into the lion's den, not just them, their wives and their kids with them. And the lions ate them up right away. He annihilated that whole scheme of the enemy trying to bring down what the king was doing, right? With one swipe. But Daniel had to trust the process. He had to trust that God was going to take care of him and that God was going to do it, right? So in trusting the process of everything that God puts before us, it's not always easy. And you get a lot of whys. I work in a school, I get a lot of whys. Why do we have to do this? Why do we have to walk in a straight line? Come on, why can't I be by my buddy, right? Why do we have to do this? And me, I'm like, because we do. Just, just trust it, come on, you just gotta do this, you know, it'll be all right, let's go, let's go. You know, constantly corralling them into doing something, right? Something they don't wanna do, something that goes against everything in their natural, like, little bodies to do. You know, kids wanna run, kids wanna play. And so, trusting the process in that, they need to learn that something better is coming on the outcome of it, right? So today, something better came on the outside of it. And I was like, yes, God, I hope they see it. I hope they see it, I don't know. I hope they do though, right? Because when you're in a place that you have to follow all of these things, you may not like them. I don't like them. Not at all. I mean, I am really good with facial expressions and I have to wear a mask and these kids can't see my facial expressions so they don't know if I'm mad or not so I gotta work on my eyes. But um, you gotta just, you know, work through it, right? And God is molding this and using this as a way to bring glory to him. And I know that he will, I just haven't seen the picture yet, right? So we're trusting the process because God promises us in Jeremiah 29, 11, that he knows the plans he has for us and they're good, right? Amen. He knows the thoughts that he has for us and they're good, yes. right? They're not to harm us in any way. Right. They're to bring us hope. That's right. Yeah, and a future. Hope and a future. Yes, that's what they're to bring us. And so, what do you want God to swallow up? Mm. He asked me that. What do you want me to swallow up? What do you what do you what would you like God to swallow up for you? What is holding you back? So much so that you can't have the freedom that God gave you cuz God gave it to you. You have freedom in him. But something's holding you back. Right? Maybe God's waiting for the right time to break it off of you, right? Uh, pastor talks about um, how she was miraculously healed or delivered from smoking cigarettes, right? She talks about that, and then she went and picked it back up again, and then she had a little bit more of a process to go through, but the second time around, she got it. God swallowed it completely, right? Maybe before with the miraculous healing, that was God showing his power that he could do that, right? Mm -hmm. But we still needed a process to go through it. We all have a process that we're walking through to change our lives continuously, continuously. I'm not where I need to be, but I'm glad I'm not where I was, Amen. Amen. Right? That's right? Yes, that's right. I'm gonna pray. So Father, I just thank you, Lord that you have given us the ability to trust you, 
that you have given us the wisdom to trust you, to know your words, and to walk step by step behind you. Father God, because you go before us and you clear the path for us and you keep us in peace, and God, your ways are good always. So Father, I thank you for that, and I thank you, God, that you are moving in each and every one of our lives. I thank you, God, that everything that I talked about, Lord, will, will go in and settle, that it's a seed, Father God. Wherever they are, it's a seed, Father, and I thank you for that. And I thank you, God, that, that um, <laughs> okay, <sighs> I am hearing and I don't know who it's for, but I am just going to say what I hear. I am hearing God says, you are important. You are worthy. I have created you, so stop listening to the lies. Because you are mine. So the enemy is trying to take people out right now. Big time. Like that roaring lion that, that, um, a, that Pastor had preached about a while ago, and I, I don't even know when, but I know that she had talked about a roaring lion coming and trying to take, take the people out. And God says, not on my watch. So he says, right now, don't believe the lies. Don't believe them. You are worthy, you are important, and you matter. That's right. You matter. He sees you. You may think nobody else does, but he sees you and you matter. And Lord, I thank you for that. I thank you, God, that you see every one of us. I thank you, God, that you see the inmost parts of every one of us. You know everything because you created us. So, God, I thank you, Lord, that you are in the midst of that, and I thank you for your peace right now just to fall in Jesus' name. Amen.